tonight we'll be talking about pride. About pride. The spirit of pride. The, the, the name of the message is it comes before the fall. It comes before the fall. You know, it's amazing how we get seduced into doing things, challenged into doing things, pushed into doing things that are really not in our best interest. Anyone know what I'm talking about? Been there, done that? Okay. <laughs> T-shirt, mug, caps, huh? glasses. <laughs> what you want? <laughs> we got it up here, right? Okay. Chains, huh? Keychains. Okay. Why? Because we've all been in a position where we thought we had arrived. Hmm? And what happened when we got there? Huh? Somebody said fell on the face. Somebody slipped down. Huh? Somebody thought that people were going to support them there, but found that some turned their backs. They got rejected. Some people find it hard to deal with rejection. But guess what? How many of us have been rejected at the point of pride? So we want to talk a little bit about pride. I don't want to preach it. I want to teach it. I want to give it step by step by step as much as God would allow me to do so. And I'll try not to take a long time to do that, okay? So um, it comes before the fall. Um, the spirit of pride and haughtiness. Haughtiness, okay? Now, a lot of us have heard about pride in terms of ego, right? And most times we've heard about Men and their egos, huh? Men and their egos. Well, in this 2023, I found out that there's a lot of women that also have egos, right? So when we talk about men, let's talk about the body of human beings, right? All of us deal with some sort of pride and ego. What I found is that pride is very pervasive. What do I mean by pervasive? Pervasive means that it's kind of ubiquitous. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. If you don't think so, check just for a second through some of the symptoms that are biblically spoken of about pride, one of which is self-deception. Anybody deceive themselves into something? Okay. I guess I'll be by myself again. <laughs> idleness. Anyone's done with idleness? That's a symptom of pride. Huh? Scornful. To have scornful behavior, scornful thoughts, it's a part of pride. It's one of the family members of pride. We have to be careful how we carry ourselves. We claim to be Christian, claim to have the love of God deep within our hearts, right? But are we demonstrating the love of God truly? Or are we just announcing ourselves before other people? How much self-promotion have we done? Um, psychologists say that about 90% of everything we speak is self-promotion. Self-promotion. Could that be a part of the family of pride? Self-promotion? I'm all that. Remember the song that came out, I think it was late 80s, early 90s, I'm Too Sexy for Myself? <laughs> How many used to sing that song? Huh? Too sexy for my car, too sexy for this, too sexy for that, right? <laughs> Right? So we know that pride can exist in many forms. Look at the age we're living in where everybody takes selfies. We're so into ourself. Social media and folks just driving in their cars trying to take a selfie of themselves driving in a car. <laughs> right? I mean, that doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense really 
But it doesn't have to be there. It could be people walking across the street decided that they like the building behind them, forgetting that they were in the middle of the street. Hmm? There's been people who have died taking selfies, tourists who want to stand in a certain position, get the monument right behind me, but they're on a cliff. And fell right off. I mean, this is documented. I can't make this stuff up. So what has happened to us that we are so self-absorbed that God can't get the glory? Is that all right? How many of us have caught ourselves in a moment of arrogance and smugness? You don't have to raise your hand. I, okay, just keep that concerned, forward-facing look, and I'll know that it might be you too, okay? <laughs> How many of us have been caught in obstinance? Walking with strife. Strife. Okay, I just want to make sure we're in the right place because we're the saved believers, right? We're the people who love God. Ready to lay down everything to serve Him, right? Amen. All right. Amen. How many of us have been contentious without cause? Just because. I'm going to mess you up just because. I mean, you're, just, you're in my space. Ever did that? Ever did that? I once um, had to take a stop real quickly. I was at a, um, a Waffle House or someplace. And, you know, I was out driving, doing my thing and what have you. And I wanted to use the restroom. And, we you know, it's a public bathroom there at Waffle House, right? Well, people who felt like they didn't want to you know, clean up. Oh, the bathroom is not working. It was bro Why would you do that to somebody else? I mean, it's your place of business, your job even, right? Why would you care to put somebody else through something so trivial? How many of us have been trivial? Because of pride. Wouldn't we call that toxic behavior? You know any toxic people? Anybody knows any toxic? That's our favorite buzzword these days, right? We, they're toxic. It's a toxic relationship. It was toxic. Folks are looking at me like, oh, he's strange, that, that, that minister. I don't know about him. He's kind of strange. Mm -hmm. So, we have these things. These are parts of pride. How about at rejection of God? Because pride is always rejecting God. Any form of pride rejects God. Even if you're feeling down on yourself, but you don't want to hear nobody tell you anything about any scripture. Has anybody been there? Done that? Don't tell me nothing about no word of God. You want to pray. I don't want to pray. I want to fight. <laughs> huh? All these are manifestations of the spirit of pride. Guess what? Unforgiveness is also a manifestation of the spirit of pride. When you can't forgive, won't forgive, won't even think about forgiving. This is it. No way, no how. You're manifesting pride. And pride comes before the... So if you're looking to fall, stay toxic. Pride is self-righteous. Pride is rebellious. And the Bible says that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So your proud self became a witch. We just want to keep the word where the words belong, right? This is the word. Okay. So if this is the word, 
And we are right here in the church knowing the word. And yet we still manifest some of this character, some of these behavior traits. Where are we really standing with God? The Bible says the righteous scarcely make it. The righteous scarcely make it. In other words, you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Haven't we all confessed the Lord Jesus? Come on, you can raise your hand for that, right? I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. We ought to be raising both hands and feet, right? Okay. Somebody say, you saved. I said, I'm not to heaven yet. Saved is E-D, I got there. Right? Right now, I'm just trying to be safe. If we keep it real. Hmm? If we keep it real. I'm in the actions of trying to do the right things. I don't get everything right. Sometimes I mess up. And as soon as I mess up and I catch it, I go, oh, God, I'm sorry. I missed you. Or I did the wrong thing. I shouldn't have said that to that person. Hmm? This is what our walk is about. Donnie McClurkin wrote that song, um, We Fall Down. Uh, for a saint is just a sinner. Hmm, but pride comes before the who fell down and got back up. That one. Pride, ubiquitous. In other words, it's in all the stuff we do. It's around us everywhere we go. Well, what is pride since it's so ubiquitous and all that stuff? It's a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction with self. Hmm? This is my achievement. Back in my parents' day, it was that song, I Did It My Way. Anybody remembers that song? Uh-huh, y'all older than y'all say y'all are. <laughs> I said it was my mama's day. You see, y'all, some of y'all. <laughs> okay? But I did it my way. I took the blows. I ate it up. I spit it out. I did all these things, and I did it my way. Why is this message coming about today, and why is it important today? Because we're in a land that's under judgment. We're in a land that's under judgment. What is judgment? Judgment is when God decides to look in on our cases. When he decides to look in on our situation and says, okay, you have reached the limit. When he spoke to um, Belshazzar in, uh, in um, Babylon, he said, Mine, Mine, to kill your father. You've been weighed in the balances and you've been found wanting. You lack something you need. You have stepped beyond where you should step. And now you're found wanting. In other words, you don't have the depth to make up what you should make up. You have no way. Have you ever played a game, a video game, or whatever else, and you found out that you ran out of lives? You ran out of chances, whether it was Super Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, or, or, or whatever the latest games are out there today, right? You have run out of lives. You have run out of opportunities, and judgment is at your door. You are now operating in mercy. And as you operate in mercy, pride, asked Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel said, Nebuchadnezzar, shut up. That's what he basically said. Look, 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 don't say nothing about yourself. Don't, don't, no, 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 nothing about yourself. And Nebuchadnezzar got up, ready to stand up and started walking around and looking at is not this great Babylon that I have built. I have subdued the nations under me with my great army that I commanded. And I've caused this great 
city, Babylon. This great nation, Babylon. Ur the Chaldeans. I am the head of it all. I am the head of gold. And the Bible says right then and there, the watchers came down. Just like we read about monitoring spirits, yeah, perfect timing for it to come up, huh? Just like we saw about monitoring spirits, God has those spirits that also watch. When you read Ezekiel's vision, you see that there was wheels that upon wheels, and they were full of eyes all around. They were watching for the glory of God. And they watched, and they saw Right. This little one is shouting his name. He's exalting himself. He doesn't realize it was God who made a decision. That's a come. I love the testimony I heard today earlier when someone said they got in an accident that was their own fault. And God still blessed them and turned it to their favor. That the policeman came out and said, well, it looked like a hit and run to me. <laughs> and they weren't even given a ticket. When we are ready to humble ourselves under the hand of God, we can walk in the place of victory. We can receive mercy when we deserve something else. Somebody said, I know that ticket was mine. <laughs> Huh? I was just ready to go hug it. It's like, it's my chicken. But God in his goodness, huh? In his mercy. I had a situation where somebody um, had set me up for an uh, opportunity, and the opportunity came, and then I found out it was a scam in the middle of it all. I was like, oh, man, yeah, how did I get caught in the mess in the middle of this, God? And, you know, I was needing the blessing to come anyhow, right? But, you know, you've ever been in between things? I was in between things. And, and, and so this thing comes to me, and the money is real money. It jumped in my account. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, I'm going to call the police about this. This thing is wrong. This shouldn't be done this way. Blah, 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 blah. What did God do? God sent a raven to bless me. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? God has ways to bless his people no matter what's going on. That honesty turned into a blessing. Call him. I'm going to call the police. I can't believe they do this. And God says, shut up. <laughs> Count your blessings, name them one by one. Hallelujah. God moves in mysterious ways as wonders to perform. Isn't that what the word says? All right. It's the Lord's doing is marvelous in our eyes. Okay, I'm just checking if we read the same Bible. I got a news flash. How many of you have worked hard and received your promotions and said, I got there, I did it? Anybody? I've done that at times. Yeah, I worked hard and I got my promotion and what else? This is what God says. For promotion comes not neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He put it down one and sets up the other. In other words, that promotion was given to you, hard worker, because God was able to use you in a situation because he wanted to put something down and raise something else up. Hmm? Let's check history. Biblically, we know that the children of Israel got the land of Canaan because God was ready to what? Put something down and raise somebody else up. He took somebody else's land 
and houses that the Israelites did not build. Why are you saying all this? This is old history. We know. Well, how about this? God is trying to bring you into your possession, into your blessing. He's trying to bring you into houses you didn't build, land you didn't find, cars you didn't pick out yourself. Huh? He's trying to do a blessing in the midst of a world that he's judging. And so he's putting something down to raise something else up. Then he put down Egypt and give all the blessings and the funds of Egypt over to the Israelites. And so that proud nation lost what they had. You're going to get this sooner or later. Note that this quote doesn't say that blessings don't come from the north. Why doesn't it say that? Because our Bible teaches us that God is in the sides of the north. It's God who is above us. And the one who can promote you is above you. Because actually what he's doing is he's pulling you up. He's pulling us up. He's pulling us up. He's pulling us up through circumstances. How come that song says my soul looks back and wonder how I got over? Because he pulled us up. We don't understand how we were sustained. When that car was barreling our way, ready to connect with us, collide with us, God somehow pulled us out of the way. His thoughts towards us are good, not evil. Hallelujah. So toxic personality traits. Anybody know anybody who's passive aggressive? That's part of pride, to be passive aggressive. Um, slightly dishonest, you know. It was a white lie. It was a little one, God, come on. Hmm? Cheating in relationships. It's kind of common today, isn't it? Unfortunately, aggressive behavior. Anybody know anybody like that? Especially behind the wheel? 285, 85, 75, 20. <laughs> you know, people have issues with accountability. Who guilt trip people all the time. I'm just trying to help you see that this is even the world giving definitions of toxic relationship behavior, toxic personality traits. But all of this is undergirded by pride. You know any manipulative people? Let me show you manipulation real quick. Oh, they need something for school. I don't feel like getting up to go get it. I knew about it for a couple of days now. Oh, honey, I knew you were going out, and while you're on your way out, could you stop by the store? It slipped my mind. I'm just trying to help. I'm just trying to help. That's all we do up here. We teach to help, right? So nobody should be trying to meet me out in the parking lot and talking about. <laughs> Selfish behavior. Selfish behavior. A lot of that has to do with pride. Okay? Playing the victim. Anybody here ever played the victim? Never mind. Um, arrogance. Impulsiveness. Hmm? Last minute, just jump up, want to do it. Anybody gaslighted anybody recently? Somebody's looking for a definition of gaslighting. Who's got a definition of gaslighting? It's making someone else believe an alternate reality. Hmm. In other words, that wasn't me per se. <laughs> 
Huh? Maybe it was this other thing that happened over here that caused that to happen. Yeah, that's a sophisticated word for lying. It's called spin in the media. Hmm? Altering truth is gaslighting. It's still called a lie, right? Jesus said, you have your father, the devil. He was the first liar. He lied in the beginning. All right. Perfectionism. Who was a perfectionist? Shh. <laughs> okay. This stuff is here, right? Disrespectful people are prideful people. And if we're in a church like this, imagine the people out there that God want to use us to get them saved. Ouch. Any self-centered Christians? Here's some verses on pride. Proverbs 11 and 2. If you have your paper and pencil, you can just write them down real quickly. Proverbs 11 and 2. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. In other words, if you are willing to just shut up. Hmm? We should say, guard our mouth with all diligence. Huh? If we could just be quiet and let whatever's floating float until we can see at least what it is. Huh? When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Proverbs 16 and 5. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. So if you saw any of those toxic behaviors in you or people who are close to you, <laughs> right? You are an abomination to the Lord, according to Proverbs 16 and 5. Hmm? And it says, though hand join in hand. In other words, although God is walking with you, your pride will not go unpunished. Your pride will not go unpunished. God is saying, I'm going to deal with pride. I hate a proud look. I hate haughty gestures. I hate a mindset where it's all about me. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. And our theme scripture, pride go up before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Galatians 6 and 3 says this, For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. That's the self-deception, de de right? That's the self-deception. When you think you're all that, I'm too sexy for my car. <laughs> too sexy for my shirt. <laughs> really? The Bible says, but he gives more grace. What is grace? Enablement, the power to do, the power to achieve, the power to overcome, the power to be lifted. He gives more grace to the humble. Wherefore, he said it, God resists the pride, the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. If we can be quiet long enough to let things develop, the meek shall inherit the earth. What is it about the meek man? The meek man knows his place. But if you're busy thinking yourself to be more than what you think you are, Solomon warns about it this way. If you go to a, a, a banquet or to a place, don't start off taking the high seat. Huh? Else you take the high seat and then someone says, well, that seat wasn't yours. And now you're embarrassed going down to a lower seat. Okay? So go and be humble. It's better to be moved from the lower seat up to the higher seat. 
Proverbs 22, 27 and 2. Let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth. A stranger and not thine own lips. Why you got to float with the crowd that says, he the one, he the one, he the one, she the one, she the one, she the one. If you got to have a crowd of people around there saying that you're the one, you're the one and announcing your name everywhere, what in the world is that? Pride. Pride. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit, there's more hope of a fool than him. These are all words inspired by the Holy Spirit. Hmm? This is Proverbs um, 26 and 12. Philippians 2 and 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife. We said strife was part of toxic behavior, part of pride, right? Or vain, empty glory, empty positioning of yourself, right? You didn't deserve it, so why are you up there like, you know, you all that, right? But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. God is targeting our character. Why? Because we're in an hour of judgment. The country is under judgment. If you think that God is not going to deal with the church because you've been righteous all your life, he said judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Amen? Um, Proverbs 8 and 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. God is saying, I hate the proud. I hate the pride, thoughts, proud justice. Thus said the Lord in Jeremiah 9, 23, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. In other words, don't put your position in your wisdom. Don't put the... Your position, because glory, glory is position. Don't position yourself in your riches. Don't position yourself, I got 10 cars. How many folks out there got beautiful houses and beautiful cars and they're in the grave? Who owns those houses now? Who has those cars now? Who has all the shoes now? Who has all the stuff now? Don't position yourself in those things. Who has all the wise sayings? Who has all the stuff that... Every, who's the influencer that's dead now? What you're influencing now? What you're running now? So, 1 John 2 and 16 says, For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All these things honor the Father, but this comes from the world. If you're keeping up with the Joneses, if you're keeping up and comparing yourself to the Smiths, if you have to run everything everywhere you go, you're operating out of the spirit of the world. Not out of the spirit of God. This is all what? Pride, right? Now, what's interesting about pride slash Leviathan, because Leviathan is really the spirit behind pride. Hmm? Leviathan is the spirit behind pride. And Leviathan, pride, is part of the water kingdom. The water kingdom. Now, the Bible says that the Lord God sits on a sea and everything is short, tranquil, even like glass around him, right? It's tranquil not because we are in order, but because his word maintains everything. Can I say that again? God has already settled his word, and his word sees through to the nth degree of everything that Satan has tried to do and everything that we are trying to do. He sees it. And his word is already taking care of it. But that doesn't mean that we have taken care of following God. Does that make sense? So everything is already orchestrated, but there is a Leviathan in the sea. Huh? The devil is in the sea. And Leviathan is that twisted serpent in the sea, right? Pride is pervasive. I told you that is everywhere. Pride is a strong man's spirit and fierce to deal with, the Bible teaches us. He's fierce to deal with. 
prideful thoughts and looks draw the anger of God. They draw the anger, the ire of God. The Bible says, woe unto the man that's in the hands of an angry God. Hmm? Another spot says in Proverbs, not Proverbs, Psalms 2, kiss the son lest he be angry at you. Hallelujah. We are seduced in surprise so that God will remove his covering of protection from us. Satan says, I know how to get them away from their blessing. I know how to shipwreck them and jack them, pull it out of the back pocket. The blessing is all but yours. But now you walked into the bank prideful. Huh? You walked into that new post, prideful. You got in that new car, prideful. You put on those clothes, prideful. And your pride set you up where God says, really now? Here you were, didn't know how you were going to get there, didn't know how you were going to make it, but now you were prideful? So now God is saying, okay, let me take that out from under them. And really, what God doesn't, he doesn't necessarily take it, he just removes his covering. Hmm? It's like the emperor wearing his new clothes, right? Anybody heard that story, the emperor's new clothes? The emperor was lied to because he was trying to find the best outfit to be the best looking person at this coronation, at this parade, and at this event. And he wanted everybody to see him in his clothes. And everything that people brought to him, eh, was not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough, it's not enough. And the tailors tried to make it, and everybody tried to make it, it's not enough. And he was ready to execute people for not giving him what he wanted. So somebody convinced him, Emperor, there's nobody better looking than you. You got it all together. Huh? Emperor, you so awesome that you don't need to wear anything. So the emperor went down the street marching his high step. Naked. Naked, naked. Who has gotten you to parade yourself to be a fool? Psalm 74 and 14 says, Leviathan, about Leviathan, thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. This is what God is going to do with Leviathan. This is what he's going to do with this perverse spirit of pride. But because pride is such a strong spirit, a pervasive spirit, we cannot handle pride ourselves. Don't ever think you're going to go and do spiritual warfare against pride by yourself. You need the hand of the Holy Ghost to guide you and direct you to deal with pride. Because we all have a little what? Pride. We all have a little bit of pride inside of us. And if we're walking with this pride inside of us, we are now all exposed ourselves to the enemy's attacks and to his tactics. And we now all come into a situation where we can easily be brought down. Remember, pride comes before the fall, a hearty spirit before correction. So the Bible says, Isaiah 27, 1, In that day the Lord with his sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan. God will punish him. I know of a minister that used to love to kind of pick on demons, pick on witches. Wow, you're going you're gonna to pick, pick on Leviathan? Dude. Huh? We found that Jezebel seems to hang out with Leviathan all the time. So whenever you meet a Jezebel, look for Leviathan. Whether it be male or female, look for Leviathan. Pride is there. That means you're fighting a very fortified, strong spirit. You're fighting two strong men. You're not just fighting Jezebel. Leviathan is there. You may not see him up front, but he's there. It seems as so Jezebel and Leviathan are married. 
It seems as though that they are always in concert, connected under some sort of demonic covenant to work with one another. So you can't fight one without the other. Is that okay? Psalms 104 and 26 says this. There go the ships. There is that Leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein. He's talking about the sea. Those of you who are anointed and feel like you're always getting attacked. Anybody? Always getting attacked. I try to make a move and bam. I try to make another move, then bam. What's going on? Always getting hit. Always getting hit. Always getting hit. Why? Because you are a ship. What does ship carry? Ships carry precious cargo. You have great potential to be a, a, a deliverer of God's people. You have a great potential to do something great in the kingdom of God, and Satan wants to knock you down. So what does he do? He sends Leviathan into the sea, into your path. Huh? To interdict, to stop, to frustrate you, and to cause you calamity. He doesn't want to make it look like he did it, the devil did it. No, he wants to make it look like you were just stupid. How many of us have been trying to avoid looking stupid lately? I mean, just keep it real. I don't want to be. <laughs> huh? Well, this is how this demon works. He wants to make it look like you just took a foolish chance. There was that man who said he's going to walk on water just like Jesus did, huh? just like Peter did. He went out into the Atlantic and he drowned. In front of his congregation that was watching him on the beach. I can't make this thing up. It happened in Ghana. And you would think, well, that's so stupid. Why would he do something that dumb like that? Pride. Pride leads you into self-deception. Pride leads you into error. This is how dangerous this thing is. So in Revelations, check this out. Revelations 12. We know Revelations 12 is being the apostolic scripture, speaking of the apostolic church, right? And it says, I saw a great wonder in heaven, a woman who was clothed with the sun, Right? And she labored to give birth. She labored to give birth. And then I saw another vision appear in heaven. And it was a great dragon huh, who had drew a third of the stores and was waiting there, what, to kill the baby or to snatch the baby away. But by some miracle, the baby was caught up to God. This is a picture of the prophetic slash apostolic church that's here today. We're supposed to be birthing, birthing, birthing out what God's trying to send into the earth in this hour. We're supposed to be birthing you out. We're supposed to be training you and supporting you and undergirding you and loving you and help you come out of the, the mess that your life has been in. We're trying to help you get past that low self-esteem and all these other things that were eating you up and literally covering you so that the real you can be seen. And what are we doing? We're in this fight. We're in this fight. But then somebody comes into the church with a spirit of witchcraft on them. A spirit of rebellion, spirit of strife, spirit of whatever. And what happens? They knock you out of position. Anybody been offended? Sitting in church? Hmm? Sitting right here at LFM. Offended. I don't know why they looked at me like that. Hmm? Why they treat me like this? Why they do me like that? Why did it come to me? I had my hand raised. <laughs> Been there, done that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> cap, ribbon, cups, glasses, right? All right. God profiles, and I'm going to get ready to stop here because I'm, I feel like I'm passing time. But God profiles Leviathan in the book of Job 41, 1 to 34. You can read it at your spare time. 
it really speaks to you about how formidable of a foe Leviathan really is. How formidable and how dangerous it is to try to fight Leviathan. The little stuff you think you know ain't enough. That's what all the stuff, talking about the fish hook, can you put, put a, a hook in his jaw? Can you, put, can you catch him with a fishing rod? Can you do all these different, all this thing, God is saying what you think you know and what works over here will not work over there. It will not work with this. You may need to call a 24-hour fast for seven days in a week before you get up and get ready to go fight with this one. You may have to call the, all the mother's board and the deacon board and the usher board. Get them all here to pray. Because pride walked up in the house. Are we, are we there? Because this is the thing that's destroying homes. The church is just a home expanded. The church is just a home expanded. So where the enemy is fighting us and fighting and fighting here at the church, he's fighting it at home too. That's going to be a child got big enough in their own mind not to want to speak to you this morning. Huh? We got to bring it home where we can know where it really happened, right? That's what starts you off on a bad day, Right? Then the wrong driver got in front of you, right? Then once you got to work just a little bit late, somebody act like you were 30 minutes late when you were just a minute late. Hmm? And stress came in. And when stress came in, you said, I'm going to fix somebody. Next one mess with me. You still have bills? Don't they know I'm the head somebody? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> At any rate, I could go on with this. But look, check this, check this. In Luke 10, 17 and 18, God's, God shows you that Leviathan was defeated. Even this, this, this one that hung out to try to defeat the woman, the church giving birth. It says, Jesus said, while he was training and raising up the church, and I like the contrast between these two scriptures. It says, and the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils or the demons are subject to us through your name. And Jesus said, yeah, I beheld Leviathan or Satan or that wicked spirit fall as lightning from heaven. He didn't even say, yeah, we got him. <laughs> he didn't even bother. He said, I saw him as lightning fall from heaven. By the way, it was on my behalf, but he didn't even add that. You are trying to take my kingdom before my kingdom appeared in the earth. <laughs> All that aside, I beheld him as lightning fall from heaven. Even Jesus didn't brag. All the swag that Jesus could walk in. There's one wiser here than Solomon. All the swag he could have walked in. Let me tell you how bad God is real quickly. God is so bad that he made time as a cage so he can get rid of stuff that he didn't want anymore. A way that he could measure his word in the performance of people's lives and the way the lives of the people could measure his word in the performance of their life. Okay, so time is a measuring stick. But it's also a cage. See, as long as you're alive, you can't escape time. So as long as you are in time, you got to be on time. <laughs> huh? Satan 
thought he was all that in a bag of chips, right? So God says, you know what? I'm going to kick your butt into time. I'm going to kick you from eternity into time. Into time. Your menace, Satan, is not all that powerful. He's been put into time. How do I know? Because Revelations 12 and 12 says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the seal, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. He was put into time to be gotten rid of, to be disposed of. God knew that no flesh can inhabit, what, the kingdom of God, so he says, I'll get rid of all the flesh at the same time. God doesn't waste anything, huh? So let's kill a few birds with one stone. All wisdom, all might, all power. Don't believe this yin-yang lie. Your God is all powerful. Beyond any measure of imagination. Anything you heard about Leviathan, guess what? You in time and you can't get out. But I got Jesus. <laughs> and he saves from the guttermost to the utmost, huh? He is the Savior, the King over all things. And guess what? All time and all power is in his hands, both in heaven and in earth. I don't have to worry about time because I know who has time and he's already written a contract with me and that contract says through his blood I am redeemed. Through his blood I've been made free. Through his blood I've been washed. I've been redeemed. I've been set free. That the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has delivered me from the law of sin and death. Today I'm beyond time because I'm seated in heavenly places in already. I'm already in heaven. I'm already where Satan can't come. I'm already, I'm high above principalities. I'm high above powers. I'm high above everything that is trying to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. I'm already there. Saints today, I want to pray with you real briefly about that which has come to trap you. That which has come to try to make you self-destruct. You see, Satan doesn't know anything else but to try to make you do what he did to himself. You got it? He did this to himself. He said, I will... Um, build my house in the sides of the north. I would exalt myself above the throne of God, above the stars of God. Hmm? He said, I'm going to put God down and take his place. So God put him into time just to give him a headliner. Today, let us pray against the spirit of pride in our lives. Father, I pray that today we have as skillfully as possible given your word concerning pride. As skillfully as possible, God, I pray that the message about pride stays in the hearts of your people and that we are changed from within, oh God, to hate pride, to hate prideful thoughts, to hate moving in toxic behavior, oh God, the things that we have done to exalt ourselves, to promote ourselves, even in the life of other people, oh God. We're asking today, oh God, that you will heal us so much so that the wounds that we had would never push us into a prideful behavior, to push us into self-exaltation, to push us into thinking that we're all that. 
when, Lord, it is you alone who is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Let your name be exalted, O oh God, in every area of our lives. Today, in the name of Jesus, and you can repeat this part after me. Dear Lord, today I speak, knowing that your glory is my covering. And in the name of Jesus, I command every thought of pride, every word I've expressed the pride, to become null and void in my life. I will no longer operate knowingly in the spirit of pride. I will no longer be contentious, rebellious, haughty, high-minded. I will not raise the brow. I will not act as if I'm the end of all things. I receive my place from you, Lord. Help me to be meek. Help me to be humble. Help me to esteem others higher than myself. Help me to regard your word as above my word. I thank you for doing this for me. Now, I plead the blood of Jesus and the word of God to separate me from the spirit of pride. Wherever you find pride in me, Lord, I give you all permission to stomp it out. In Jesus' name, amen.